The next step is you can now rivet your rear top skins into position. Um, the best way to do this is to Clico every single hole uh, before you rivet them. Um, that just kind of makes sure that you're not going to have any weird waves or anything. You can really see the, uh, what the final assembly will look like. Um, and then remove every other Clico once you've got everything positioned how you like it. Uh, if you need any adjustment on the ribs to avoid any kind of bulges or dips or anything like that, uh, you can shoot all of the rivets on your rear top skin. As you can see here, I've got my uh, baggage door just Clicoed still. So while I'm fitting up this baggage door, which we'll do in a minute, uh, I like to just leave it Clicoed because that way if there's any adjustments that need to be done or any tweaking, you haven't locked yourself in here just yet. Um, in addition to that, I have left off my uh, comm antenna reinforcement plate on the top here. It's just Clicoed as well right now as well as the entire area around my parachute. Um, these can actually be riveted now if you'd like. Um, we're going to rivet those and we'll install some padding to protect these parachute cables and we'll get them bundled up nicely and I'll show you that process here in a minute as well. And um, so yeah, let's get to, get to that. Next, we'll get the front parachute cable installed with the tangs to your uh, engine mount and firewall here. So there's a couple of uh, tricky steps with this. First, you want to make sure that that cable nests nicely so that it's not interfering with your avionics or anything like that. If you do have your avionics installed, um, I have already done mine. I do it before the canopy goes in uh, just for ease of getting the wires in. Um, I'll discuss that in another video. But Anyway, so I install these bolts so that they go through and the nut is on the, uh, the firewall forward side. Um, and that's just so that you can always double check, whoops, that your torque seal, it's a lot easier to check that your torque seal is uh, in place and these nuts haven't loosened up at all if it's on your firewall forward rather than your um, behind your instrument panel and all of that. It's not uh, super critical. They don't usually really have any reason to come loose, but it's just a lot easier to check if it's on the firewall forward. So, um, so yeah, the tang mounts around this and the two AN5 bolts go through and it's pretty easy to do. So I've got that done already and we'll move to the next step. Our next step is we're going to install our rear parachute cables into the channel that they go into, down in here. And you're gonna check that it fits. And of course, you've already done this before your canopy was mounted. Um, so a common issue with these is when they swage the cable, there's a slight bulge on the width of the cable. So this needs to slide into the channel like this and the bulge on the swage is actually interfering. So what you'll do is just gently file this bulge down just enough so that this is able to slide comfortably into this channel here and you'll be able to slide your bolt through here. Um, so we'll get that done now. And now you can see that the parachute cables rest uh, nicely in their channel just with j a slight bit of uh, filing on filing on the sides there. Uh, they'll be able to rest nicely in their channel and get down far enough so that you can install the AN6 bolt. Uh, make sure to put some torque seal on there so that you can always inspect it later on. Uh, make sure that that's staying sealed up and uh, we're ready to move to the next step. So for the next step we will install our seat belts and get them bolted up to here, down at the bottom and there for the front seat seat belts. Okay, so the first step in installing your, your uh, front seat belt uh, reel here is to remove this little cover plate. Basically, there are just two uh, flanges, so if you kind of pry it back just like this gently, uh, they'll release from this bar here, and you'll be able to get the cover plate off. So one thing that you'll find on this um, is that if you try to extend this seat belt in any orientation, 
other than perfectly straight up, it will not pull out. So keep that in mind. Hold the seat, the uh, reel vertically like this and begin unwinding the seat belt. Then you get it to the stop down here. Okay. So the next step is we're going to need to pull the seat belt out of its um, slot, as you can see here. So once we do that, we don't want the spring to uncoil and cause the retract. So once we get the seat belt all the way out, then you're going to slide. Uh, I use this six inch scale here. You slide it through that groove and prevent it from uncoiling. So I'll get that done now and show you what it looks like. So then you just gently slide the seat belt uh, out through that uh, slot that's in there. And then there'll be a pin. So all of this I'm doing while I'm holding it. And you get that pin out. I probably should have had a screwdriver or something to poke it through, but you get the idea. So then you'll push the seat belt out through its groove. Like that. And then install your scale or whatever you want to use. A screwdriver is fine, like that. And now it cannot unravel itself. So we're ready to install this onto the fuselage. Okay, so as you can see here, we've run the seat belt through the three uh, side rails here with edge protector on all of them. And that just kind of ensures that the seat belt doesn't slowly get marred by the sharper aluminum edge and it kind of uh, allows a smoother uh, slide along that aluminum. So once we've gotten that done, we then take our uh, seat belt uh, retractor here and we're gonna run the, the seat belt back through it in the same way that it came out, which means down through this piece down, around, and in, and then we'll reinsert that pin. And so you'll notice, um, just to confirm that you're doing everything properly, that there is, on one side, there is a deeper groove right here than on the other side. And so that deeper, uh, wider groove is for this plastic pin. So if there's any question on which way it came out, uh, just make sure that this uh, plastic pin is on this wider groove section here. Um, is that in the camera? Yeah. So just make sure that that's uh, in there. And also another thing to make note of when you're sliding the, the seat belt down through the channels, you do want to make sure that you've got it oriented so that the top, the top part of your seat belt is straight. So the, the seat belt goes straight down through there without like a half turn or a full turn or anything like that. So uh, once you've got that done, uh, we're ready to install the, uh, the reel and the top bolt into the fuselage. Okay, so once the seat belts are installed, you can install the uh, cap over the top part as well as the cap on the bottom parts. Um, one extra thing to pay attention to is on your bottom bolt here. Let's see if I can get it in the shot. Yeah, you can see here, once again, you're just wanting to make sure that when the seat belt is around you, that there's no twist anywhere in it. Um, so make sure that this flange points straight out from uh, the mount on the, the uh, fuselage here. Uh, that's to help it clear the uh, side skin once you go to install that. Um, make sure to use the lock washers that the kit comes with there. And in addition to that, use the shoulder bolt uh, up top here with this spacer behind it. So that kind of captures the uh, top of the seat belt and allows it to rotate. Um, so once you've done all of that, then you can install these caps, top and bottom there, and we're ready to move to the next step.